Uh, my name is Anella. I'm a GIS analyst at the Sustainable Development Solutions Network on the SDG Today program. Um, I'll be presenting on our project, My School Today. And I know that's a lot of layers of different things that I don't find, so I'll go through them one by one. Okay, so the UN SDSN um, was launched under the auspices of the UN Secretary General in 2012. Um, our focus is on the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Um, it's currently led by Dr. Jeffrey Sachs. And the program SDG Today that I am a part of is the geospatial arm of um, the SDSN. So for those of you who don't know about the SDGs, there are 17 of them. They were implemented in 2015, and the goal is to have all of that met by 2030. So this year is a very important year because it's, it marks the midpoint of the SDGs. Um, for every SDG, as you can see, um, they span a variety of topics from poverty to um, health and well-being, um, clean water and sanitation, um, so on and so forth. Um, for every SDG, there's a set of indicators that are used to um, calculate and monitor um, the progress towards them. And I'd like to also emphasize that the SDGs are not just a framework for countries to implement, but it's for people, for businesses, for local governments, policymakers. Um, I was scrolling, I was doing an Instagram scroll a few months ago, and I saw that the restaurant down the street from my house, um, for context, I live in Brooklyn, um, posted about how their business plan is implementing the SDGs. And I thought that was pretty cool. And they have a lot of my business now. <laughs> Um, so, as I mentioned, SDGs Today is the geospatial arm of SDSN. It was launched uh, in partnership with ESRI and the National Geographic Society in July of 2020. Um, and our goal is to advance and cultivate the use of timely geospatial data for the SDGs. Um, as I've mentioned, it's the midway point. Um, it's very important for us to use um, open and timely data to monitor the SDGs. So we do this with three different work streams. The first is our data curation and production work stream, which is the bulk of my work. Uh, we have a data hub of over 50 timely data sets that we've curated over the past couple of years. Um, they have to meet all eight of these criteria that we set out, including things like, um, of course, how timely it is has to be updated at this annually, um, how open it is, uh, if it's a global data set or not, um, and things like that. We also have a storytelling work stream uh, where we have curated, I think, over 100 story maps related to the SDGs. Um, so these story maps just give context to um, different data sets, data projects, uh, use cases, um, they can serve as training materials related to the SDGs. So a lot of the times, if a data set doesn't meet our criteria to be added to our data platform, um, we'll contact the data provider um, and collaborate on a story map so that we can still get the word out there about their work and the research that they're doing. We also have an education and capacity building work stream. Um, and this spans a lot of different things. Uh, for example, this summer, we're having our third annual um, Eco Ambassadors Summer Program, which is a program for middle and high school students um, to learn how to use geospatial data for the SDGs. Um, we've also, as I mentioned, we have some story maps um, that we've created in collaboration with Esri. Um, teaching people specific things about how to use ArcGIS um, and geospatial data. And so the project that I'm now presenting um, basically cross-cuts all of these priorities. Um, it is called My School Today. Uh, we created a model that calculates the walking travel time of school-aged populations to school locations um, recorded in OpenStreetMap. Um, so you can see it right now, it spans just Africa. 
Um, we're working on expanding this analysis um, globally and um, across other SDG indicators, which I'll mention again at the end of the presentation. Um, and we visualize these data on a dashboard. Um, this is just a screenshot of it. Just a plug for my workshop on Sunday, if anyone is still around, um, I'll be going through the dashboard, um, how we made it, the ways that we can interact with it and so on. Um, but um, if you won't be attending that, you can find it on our website, which I'll have linked at the end. This is the basic methodology. Uh, we extract the features from OpenStreetMap um, and we create isochrone um, rasters that show between zero and 30 minutes walking travel time from school locations and school age populations uh, between 30 and 60 minutes and over 60 minutes. Um, from those isochrones, um, we then, uh, we also have um, disaggregated age and sex population um, distributions from world pop. Um, so from those two data sets, we do some zonal statistics and for administrative level one boundaries, uh, we estimate how many students in, within those boundaries um, have access to schools um, segregated by those um, minutes. Uh, so there are a few reasons why we decided to use OpenStreetMap. Um, the first is that through our data curation work stream, we've seen that there's, it's actually pretty hard to find timely data that's global or at least regional, um, especially part like pertaining to the SDGs. Um, and we like that it is continually updated by community members. Um, and we also just want to give the power of data to the local communities, especially if this data set is going to inform local policies and things like that. Um, we want to make sure that the people um, have a voice in this process. So through this, we have also launched a call to action when we also um, launch the data set. And we have developed a few mapping guides in different languages to teach people how to actually um, map their schools in OpenStreetMap. Um, so we have the guide for OpenStreetMap and we also have a guide for mapping schools using uh, Survey123, which we then um, import into OpenStreetMap. And if anyone wants to look at the guides, I'll give you a couple minutes to go through these QR codes and um, decide which language you'd like to map in. Um, and I also just want to highlight that this um, has been an ongoing ongoing effort for the past two years. Um, we've received a lot of feedback from people in country about how they're really excited to learn how to do this data analysis and data collection. Um, we recently got these photos from a school in Uganda where they printed out their mapping guides and handed it to students. And these students had a great field day um, mapping schools and things like that. Um, we always uh, show this person because he <laughs> jokes that he wants to be an influencer through this process. Um, <laughs> So he really enjoyed um, mapping around his community and, or right, bike riding around his community and mapping the schools um, within, um, he says 10 kilometers. And that was about a year ago. So I wonder how much he has done since then. Um, but overall, since our launch in 2021, we have tracked the addition of over 89,000 school buildings to OpenStreetMap throughout Africa. Um, of course, we don't have a way right now to know if it's through our initiative or if it's just the natural progression of the addition of school locations on the platform. Um, but either way, I think that's a pretty big feat. I um, updated this number this morning and I was very impressed. I think um, before this, 
last year it was around 4,000 new school buildings. And so that's a pretty big jump since then. Uh, we've also secured 18 strategic collaborations. So these are collaborations with people who work in country who have um, worked through distributing our training materials and helping um, people in country map their schools. Um, I also wanted to mention that we are launching a new project in September with Humanitarian OpenStreetMap and HiGit to continue filling in these data gaps and monitoring SDG indicators with OSM data. Um, so we've gone through all of the SDGs and all of their indicators, identified which ones can be monitored using OpenStreetMap data and a similar analysis to the My School Today analysis. And we are going to launch that project in a few months. So that's very exciting. Um, this is basically the same thing. We're still seeking partnerships. So if anyone wants to get involved with that project, um, feel free to talk to me afterwards. And that's it. So these are our website, um, our handles, follow us. And um, yeah, thank you. Oh, 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 oh,